When it comes to placing hempcrete, there isn't really much to know, except for all the things you've got to know. It would seem on the surface level as a fairly unskilled job. You put the hempcrete into the void, you pat it down, and it's done. But, of course, this is the point at which the density of the wall is decided, according to how much it's compacted. And also the point at which various mistakes can be made, like missing bits or over compacting and under compacting. So the wall you end up with depends on the technique of the person placing the hempcrete. Hello, welcome to episode 21, uh, one, uh, 21, episode 21, placing hempcrete. You can see from this void that I'm going to fill that although I've only gone up 600 mil of shuttering, there's already quite a few difficult to reach places. The frame itself is designed to avoid horizontal members as much as possible, which is why this one is on the diagonal. And where you do use a horizontal timber, try and make it as thin as possible so it's easier to tuck the hemp green in underneath it. But even then, there are obstacles like the socket here, which is going to be hard when it comes to pushing hempcrete in underneath it. And further down behind that is an area that might be just a little bit far for one arm to reach it. Wherever possible, hempcrete is placed using gloves. This is so that you can feel what you're doing and you don't press it down too hard or not hard enough. Down in this difficult corner here, I might have to use a stick to reach in, but apart from that, I'll just be able to use a gloved hand. When I'm ramming it in with a stick, I can't feel anything. The density of the wall is important because it determines how insulative it's going to be, how strong it's going to be, and how much it's going to cost. You don't pour hempcrete, because it's not liquid like concrete. You don't compact it into a solid. You place it and then just compress it a little bit so that it has some structural integrity, but it has an open structure with lots of little air pockets in it that give it its good thermal properties. If it's over compacted, you eliminate all that air and it doesn't insulate so well anymore. It also costs more because you're using more material in the wall, but it is strong. Whereas if you under compact it, it costs less because you're using less material and it has lots of air in it, so it's a very good insulator, but it's not so strong, so it might be vulnerable to getting damaged. And somewhere between under compacting it and over compacting it is a sweet spot where the density of the wall is just right. You can adjust the density within the wall according to what you're trying to achieve. If there's a vulnerable corner or something, you can press it down a little bit harder to get a slightly stronger area of the wall at the expense of a little bit of thermal insulation. If it's um, around the timbers, you can tuck it in a bit harder so that the hempcrete is held tight to those. Whereas in the middle of the void here, it may as well be a bit looser because that's where it's doing the most insulative work. Also, up against the shutters on either side of the wall, you might want to consolidate the hempcrete a little bit more because that's what determines the texture of the face of the wall. When it comes to the texture of the wall's surface behind the shuttering, there's another trade-off, because a very open texture will allow the air to permeate the wall, so the hempcrete can dry out and cure more quickly. And that in turn means that you can put the finishes on sooner and finish the building more quickly. But obviously, if it's a wide open texture, it's also going to require more of that base coat when you put the finishes on, and that's going to cost more. So that's the decision that has to be made when the hempcrete is being placed and patted down in the wall. It's worth doing a little test wall to get a feel for the technique and take the shuttering off and have a look. This is my test wall and you can see all the usual mistakes. It's not very consistent because I'm not yet used to how it should feel. Down here there's a gap where I've missed a bit underneath the horizontal. This bit here is probably a bit over compacted. Up here it's loose and flaky. And in the middle, it's just right. Sort of like Goldilocks with porridge. This hempcrete is too loose. This hempcrete is too compacted. This hempcrete is just right. I met Goldilocks once. Very high maintenance. Excellent craftswoman there. 
here's the first tub of hempcrete. Let the games begin. I'm actually quite excited now that I'm putting the first bit in. Here's the tricky bit. I can reach this. I'm going to need a little bit of tamping stick to get in here where I can't get my hand. This bit is going to be more like plain sailing. There's plenty of room to spread the hempcrete out. To place it, you just put a layer of hempcrete into the void about 100 to 150 mil deep. Spread it around evenly. Pat it down a little bit. Consolidate any bits you want consolidated. Back around the timbers. And it's done. To get the hempcrete under this horizontal socket, I'm just tucking it under from behind. And at this end, pushing it in around this sheep's wool a little bit to make a nice seal. I'm about two thirds of the way there now. And there it is, the end of the first stage. That's four bell mixers full of hempcrete, which is about two bags of hempcrete fixer and a bale, bale and a half maybe of shiv. It's quite fast too. That's about four hours work and I've never done it before. And I'm mixing it and placing it myself. This is the moment of truth then. I get to see my first bit of hempcrete wool. Ta-da! It's not at all bad. I'm quite pleased with that. Did pretty well around this tricky socket box. There's just one little bit missing here. There are a couple of patches that are a bit underpacked. But apart from that, it's fairly consistent. So that was placing hempcrete. If you liked it, press the little like button. And if you're thinking placing hempcrete into what, then the next episode will be about the shuttering that forms the shape of the wall that's packed out with hempcrete. And if you press subscribe, you can get a notification to tell you when that is. And if you're thinking, I like the cut of his jib, I'm gonna get him a coffee, then the Patreon link is in the description box. That's all, bye.